<laughs> he, he made it. <laughs> What's going on, man? Oh, good, man. Good. Ah, you've been, you been through the through the, through the, uh, through the battle. So, yeah. so welcome to Ghana. You have made it to Ghana. Yeah, Kotoko <laughs> International Airport. Yeah, I got it right. It sounds it sounds close enough to me. <laughs> it sounds close enough to me. <laughs> So yeah, man, so it's not just about, you know, just bridging the gap across the oceans. Cause this is your first time here, right? Yeah, it's my first time. So we're bridging the gap intercontinental as well. Very important. That's right, because there's so much. The continent shall be very, very important. Cause all the resources are here. Yes. The people resources, yes. the skills, the brain, the know-how, the material resources. So anyway, so this is Kingsley's first time in Ghana. And so what else we're gonna do is get we gonna have Morris go to Nigeria, so we gonna work. I'm gonna introduce you to Morris. What is it? Morris, Morris. I'm gonna introduce you to Morris, and then Morris will go to Nigeria. Beautiful. And so that's how we are gonna keep bridging this gap. So stay tuned for more. We'll be back. Enjoyed the drums? Yeah, I enjoyed the drums. And you, you, you play, you say you play similar drums where? In Nigeria, in eastern part of Nigeria. Really? But I think drum beat is very popular in Nigeria. Well, you started moving, it just like something took over you, like it just hit you. I man. started dancing, I, I, I have to start dancing. It, it was... But I got excited ah. because we play drum a lot in Nigeria. Okay. But drum beat is a way of raising people. So it brings out that energy in you, and you find, before you know it, you see yourself dancing. I saw myself dancing, I don't dance it, I don't dance <laughs> you know, it's part of our, our fiber, it's part of our culture. Yes! And so, I have one at home, and oh. so sometimes when I'm coming out, sometimes I just go to the drum and beat it, and then drop out. You see, we, are, we, 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 we actually share some similarities. No, as, as blacks, there are things you do that we also do. No, Those may be in different see, ways. No, you see, like eating the that coconut, people, not eating that soft coconut versus the, the dry. Same people, <laughs> like, the same people, because some of the indigenous, the custodians of Accra land, they migrated from Nigeria. Oh, the guy. The guys, oh. they migrated from Nigeria. Oh. And so everything you guys do there, they do it. We, the Airways, the Airways are part of Togo and Ghana. Oh, the airways, oh. we have airways in Togo, we have airways in Ghana. And our things, our language, their culture, similar. similar. And so, there's much similarity. Yeah, much. And so, one people. What? One people. And so, it is the colonial master who put the division. I call them colonial the clowns. Y'all call them blue man. I call them clowns. <laughs> the Buffoons. colonial clowns. The colonial clowns. <laughs> right. They put a wedge between a brother and a sister between a brother and a brother by what dividing our land you know changing our language you know and then uh, and then in a form of education the education they give us to it is not what they you know have in them in imagine fact, high school here in ghana i was taught about a british uh, uh, uh colonial master i was taught we were taught in the uh, history we were taught about granville sharp uh, uh, McCarthy, Ma Ma Gorgisberg. We were not taught about yeah, our own people. indigenous people, our own people who are warriors, our own people, people who are, you know, uh, people who tell us stories. Well, be people careful, Morris, because I, I know some folks gonna come in and say that they told, they taught you about you to your people. Now they gonna tell you. Somebody gonna chime in on these comments and say that you lying so, so, and so, you ain't, you don't know now. So you sure now? You make, you make sure because they, they, somebody gonna say that you were taught. The, 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 about the indigenous people. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So, and the way the, the, these colonial masters were intentional with their system, this, the education that they're giving to us, mm -hmm. the education they brought to us, they were intentional about these systems. And so, as you said, so, they didn't actually give us maybe the science and technology part of the education. Mm -hmm. They just gave us education that isn't even useful. Do, do you know what I saw last two weeks? I went out to part of Accra. Mm -hmm. And I saw white kids. White kids. You know what they are doing? Their parents brought them. And, and I found out that they were in a school and they brought them to a weaving, cane weaving shop. 
And so they set up a table, as we set, set up the table here, and this little kid started to weave the, you know, came a basket. And this weaving, do you know what it, it does? It stirs the brain, the, the, the brain, and it works, you know, helps you a lot to think, to do something with your hands. But bring an African kid to come and weave a basket. So we don't do this, but if you bring something like a, a gun to shoot, we give it to her. Yeah, boop, 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 boop. no. They do that in America too. They yeah. give us guns with and drugs, guns, kill ourselves, guns to mess our minds up. To play with guns, but see what they are teaching their children to do. Bring them to a cave, a, 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 a basket weaving shop. And they learn tree too. They learn, they learn, and it stirs the brain. It you know, it, it teaches them. Uh, 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 what, 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 how can I put it? It teaches them culture, life, life, you know, something that they can take throughout their life, throughout their whole life, you know, and instead of it it help them a lot. But bring us our people, and they have lived these arts with the teachers, different things. That's why we find it difficult to take care of our own environment. That's why we see our, our, our professors are being controlled. Indigenous. Our, pro indigenous. our professors are being controlled, you know. No, that's why we gotta teach ourselves, and that's why we're having this yeah. conversation, and that's why we're doing what we're doing. That's why we're bridging the gap because we have to teach ourselves. Because if we leave our education to other people, then we will continue to follow these same patterns of ignorance, misinformation, um, uh, miseducation about each other. You know, looking at each other strange. While in the meantime, they're building everything up. They're building harbors and all kind of other things and ports and we're sitting there fighting over nonsense and they're continuing to dominate and neo-colonize colonize recolonize and all of that stuff so i'm just happy that you know we're having this conversation so we're going to continue this more uh as we have kingsley here in ghana he's from nigeria the Igbo, right yeah, the Igbo tribe. That's the Igbo tribe. That's right. And you are, what tribe are you from here in I'm, Ghana? I'm an Ewe. You're an Ewe. I'm from the Angwa Kingdom. All right, see, so he's an Ewe from the Angwa Kingdom. Angwa Kingdom. Oh, I, I, if I, I'm not even. You said it, you said it. I was telling Kingsley, he was saying that, uh, how can we bridge the gap between Nigeria and Ghana? And I, tell, and I, tell, I was telling Kingsley this morning that it can never happen at the top level. We have, we have the OAU which is now AU, and it's not doing anything about, you know, bridging every African, country. African countries, bringing us together. So we got to do it on the micro So level. we have to do it from the grassroots. Just like me and you today. I'm yeah. from Nigeria, and I'm from Nigeria, Ghana, and we meet on the same platform, we discuss, we take it, go back to Nigeria, you know, you talk to somebody, you talk to your friends, and I also be talking to my friends here, yeah. you know, so it gives me, Meeting you and then talking to a lot of people, talking to our brothers from the diaspora, it gives me the, the time, it gives me the opportunity to change, you know, the mindset, things that we have, you know, against our brothers as in Nigeria. Mm. So, you live in Nigeria, you have to leave Nigeria, everything in Nigeria. Me in Ghana, as soon as I meet you, I have to leave everything back as a Ghanaian and face you as my brother. Mm. And by so doing, we can interact with each other. We can trade among ourselves. Mm. And that can help us in the future. Yes. Yeah. That's it. I nice know. man. Nice meeting you. Once again. <laughs> so we are here at the Black Independence Square. About to take a picture in front of the Black Star, the world famous Black Star. They've just come from the Art Center. Black Star. Everybody's still alive. And Kingsley has tapped into his. Not his inner Nigerian, just his Nigerian. And he was building and dealing too. And so, this is where we are. This is how we do maximum impact. Where are you? Hey, 2022 is right around the corner. What you gonna do? We hope to see you here to have one of these experiences, bridging the gap, tearing down the walls of misinformation and telling our stories through our eyes. Maximum Impact Travel. Open up your eyes and see.
Adventures of Darren and Destiny. And Darren and Destiny are twin brother and sister. And you go on their adventures throughout the African diaspora, meaning so African diaspora destinations, primarily focused in Africa, but we go to South America, we're gonna to go to the Caribbean. Their first book is going to take you to Ghana. And then we're gonna go on a safari. And from there, we're gonna to go to Ethiopia. And then we go to Salvador, Brazil. And what the goal is, is to be able to inspire curiosity in the continent of Africa, in our children from a very young age, and to really tell a more accurate story. Most of our children are exposed to negative images, late night infomercials about how bad things are, everybody's sick, everybody's poor, everyone's uneducated, but that's simply not true. So what Darren and Destiny and their family do is they go to different African destinations. They are learning about these different places. You're beginning to see positive images, but still telling the truth. I mean, that's the important thing, to tell the truth about some of the things that have occurred. But it's all done on a children's level so they begin to understand it. And it begins to pique their curiosity. They begin to learn more. And hopefully one day they will want to explore and visit the continent of Africa and its many countries. There's just so much that Darren and Destiny are able to do and as they're doing it, it's, it's like they begin to open the minds of a, a new generation and they don't get bombarded and indoctrinated with negativity. They're actually able to see positivity and inspiring images and messages about the African diaspora as well as those who are still indigenous to the continent of Africa and they begin to learn more and, uh, and just see things differently. So I'm excited about introducing the adventures of Darren and Destiny.